Good morning, and welcome to Blix All About Horses and Their Care, where our motto is companionship, care, and commitment. I'm Gabriela Rodriguez, your host, and today our show is called Holiday Decorating Like Martha Stewart on a Horse Budget. And to help us with the show today, I've invited a close friend, Brenda Bryant, who also owns horses. And together, we're going to try to help you figure out what you have at home that you can make decorations with. If you have horses, or even if you don't have horses, we hope to be able to give you some ideas of what you can do. So I'd like to introduce Brenda. Hello. How are you doing, Brenda, today? Fine, thank you. You know, sometimes we talk about the reality of having a horse for people that don't know that. Today was kind of a, a, one of those days that really puts you into reality. Doesn't it, Brenda? Yeah. It was all icy outside, right? <laughs> yeah. And even when we got to the studio, we sort of kind of slid in. Yeah. And, <laughs> right. But I try to tell people sometimes it's hard to imagine what it's like to have horses outside until you have days like this. Yeah. And then you have something that somewhere you have to be at 10 o'clock for, for a taping of a show, something like this, and you have to go through all the work that you have to do to make sure all your animals are okay. Yes. Right? It's a lot. It's up early. It's a lot. So before we do anything else, I would love to introduce all of your animals and my animals to the audience. And we'll start with your animals first. Okay. So I think we have some pictures that we're going to show, and we're going to start with your doggies, I think. And I think the first one there is Nina. Nina, Nina Rosa. And she is a little poodle. A small miniature poodle. She's 15. She was born at wow. my house. And I have her daughter and her granddaughter. I also had her mother and her grandmother. All in the Five family. Generations. Wow, that's pretty neat. And here are all the six Look dogs that I dogs. own now. <laughs> and they were all born at my house except for the brown one. And then your little cat? <laughs> and Dakota, I got from the animal shelter in West Kennebunk two years ago. So and she's a very lucky kitty. A very wonderful boy. And then there's another picture of her. Isn't that gorgeous? He what is. What a pretty, pretty, is pretty cat. So that's four of your animal uh, companions. <laughs> and what about this picture? Who's that? <laughs> that's me about the time I started riding. I was four years old. And well, that that's not you there. That's me. That but was the picture on a standard before. bread. <laughs> there you are. There that you was are. on a standard bread named Joe. And my friends owned him. Well, I was going to say, you look the same. Thank and that's you. great. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> and you were only like two or three there, four. right? Four. Yeah, four years old. Four. And then the next picture I didn't tell you about, but the next picture is of me, and that was my horse, which is not a real horse. Yeah. So I think I was probably, I was a year and a half, actually, I looked. And uh, there's one picture of me. I'm excited to look at the horse, and I still have that horse, actually. I put it up in my loft. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. And then that other horse is me rocking up and down in it. So we are two people that had horses from the very beginning, but they were a little different, yes. right? And we've come together, and we've connected. I did have a rocking horse, but I quickly switched to the real to thing. To the real one, <laughs> not me. Okay, what about this? Who's this? The little miniature horse is Blaze. He's 25 years old now. And the two Angora goats behind him are his friends. Aren't they, they live cute? live in adjoining pens. And what are their names, the goats? Roz and Raja. Roz and Raja. And they're all part of your animal family. Yes. They require a lot of care. They're all outside. A lot of you care. you got to take care of all of them. OK. And then we have, oh, who's this? Delta Dream. Delta. She raced briefly. And she's and a standard bred, she's right? She's a standard bred. And she raced briefly, and then we saddle trained her. She's only been ridden a little bit, but right now she's a pet. We're deciding what we should do with her. Pets are good. <laughs> Don't you agree? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Now, I have a question about her. Since she raced, standard bread racing, for people who don't know what that is, that's, there's pacing and trotting, right? Was she a pacer? Or she's a, a trotting trot bread. A trotting? She pulls a sulky. Yeah. So she raced at Scarborough Downs and all the main fairs. Yeah, and a sulky for people that don't know are one of those carts. A little two-wheeled right? cart. <laughs> right. So, because we have a lot of people that are watching this, and some of them don't know anything about horses or races. So, yeah. And now she's at home with you, and that's another animal that you're taking care of. So how many do we have so far that you take care of? every morning. Oh, there are 14 There altogether. are 14. Okay, so <laughs> we downsized next? a little. <laughs> <laughs> After Delta, then we have another horse here, and, and this is, well, it's a small picture. It's this too is bad my special boy, E.T.'s Candid Cam, and he was bred as a pacing horse, which means the legs on the same side go in unison. And he was a racehorse, and then he wasn't making a lot of money, <laughs> and so well, I bought lucky, him from right? a friend. I bought him from a friend, and he's been at my house for, wow, eight years now. Yeah, another pet. He's a very special boy. Yes. 
and we just do writing in the backyard right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. So is there another picture, I think? We had one more picture. There he is. There's a side view of, of E.T. Oh, yes. And what does E.T. stand for? E.T. The, is the breeder's initials. Okay. He wasn't bred so at my house. Candid. Okay. And how old is he? And he's 15 now. 15. And the other mare, how old is she? She's six. Six. So she's a baby. Yeah. All right. Well, now on to my animal family. My animal family is a lot smaller than Brenda. So when I think of all the animals I have to take care of, I think of Brenda <laughs> because I have nothing compared to Brenda. <laughs> this is my little rascal. Rascal died a couple of years ago, but I still like to, to see his picture once in a while. He loved the holidays. So he's not with us anymore. But the next picture is of my little dog, Annie. And that's not her yet. That's still Rascal. There's Annie. Annie came from the shelter, and that's when we first got her. She had been, you know, like a lot of those animals, not in very good care. So she's got a very happy life now. And then the next picture is of Hallie, and the two of them were crated together at the shelter. So when that's we wonderful. went in, we wanted two dogs, so we got the two that we got. And so now wonderful we're, to we're get working two dogs with them. together. Yes, yes. So um, those are our two dogs now, and they're both about two years old, I guess, two and a half. And they so love the beach, don't they, they? They love the beach, but they're not really beach dogs. We were hoping to have a beach dog, but sometimes you don't get a beach <laughs> dog. <laughs> so they're more at home dogs. Yeah. Okay, the next picture we have is of Blue and Lexi. Blue was my first horse, and I love this picture. It's with my husband, and that's at the beach, one of the places that we love to go. And then Blue died uh, in 2008, and Lexi was left alone, so we have the next picture which shows Fritz and Lexi mm -hmm. and um, they were nice enough to pose for me when I was outside when we got that little bit of snow that melted which is not going to happen this time so now that we're through with our animal family you have many how many in your animal family 14 I 14 think. <laughs> and I have two four you have 10 more than I do. Wow. That's 10 times as much work. <laughs> so God kind bless of you. group them together by breeding. <laughs> <laughs> so now that we've seen our, the pictures of all our animals, one of the reasons that we're inspired by doing this when you have horses is because you have so many things lying around at home. And you look at it every day and you wonder what you're going to do with it. So the reason I decided to do this show was because if you are like, like us and a lot of people that have horses, they're very expensive and it's not that even it costs that much to feed them it's the vet bills it's the mortgage on the land on the buildings on the barns all, all the things that you need to give them a good home so when your money is all going there then you need to try to figure out how to do other things that maybe you I used to buy 20 30 40 dollar wreaths and I don't do that anymore so um, this is a show about finding natural resources, things that are around your house, things that are outside. We live in a beautiful state and have all kinds of things that we can use. Evergreens. Yeah, and you found, you're very artsy. You did some beautiful yeah. things, I thought. So why don't we start with that? Yes. Do you want to show the horse head first or do you want to? This horse okay. head wreath was made by my friends and they made these to benefit the Futures for Standard Breads, a nonprofit organization that takes in standard breads, usually two or three at a time, and uh, tries to train them to saddle or, or t to have more manners or whatever they need. And Well, they try we to introduce them, them into the world again, right, for after their racing Most life? Most of them have been racing horses. Yeah. Some of them haven't. Uh, but so they go from that world, right, to the world of being at home. And so there's a whole lot of training that goes into that. And so that's what you do with these horses. It's a wonderful thing. Yes, we give them manners and make them safe. <laughs> manners are good for so everybody. So these trees right? are available. You can look at the website online, Futures for Standard Breads. They're available for $25. And you can pick one up in Buxton or Saco. And the other thing you said is they're not all the same. Everyone so, is different. Yeah, so you're going to get your Custom own made. unique horse head. Now, can these horse heads go outside? They're so, they look so fragile. Yes, I, I believe they're durable enough. And they're, they're very beautiful. I would love to have one myself. Okay. So if anybody is interested in that and you have a little bit of money to spend, this is a great organization to, uh, to spend the money on because that money goes directly to helping these horses. And you get this beautiful horse head that you can have for years and years and really enjoy when you get tired of putting it outside and gets a little bit old and you can well, put it Well, it will inside, only right? last one season because these are real greens. Well, that's good to know too. Yeah. But you can always spruce it up and put it inside maybe. They make great gifts too. Beautiful. So again, that's Futures for, for Standard, standard Breads. And if you're interested, um, 
people can look on our website, www.blixhorses.org, click on the Facebook icon, and I will put Futures for Standard Breds in case you forget what the title is. You can Google it, and we'll have uh, a lot of things on there so that you know what it is. Okay, so now we're on to things that we actually made now that you don't have to spend money on, right? Okay. Okay. So Gabriella challenged me. Uh, <laughs> she came up with a couple of ideas, and she said, I want to show decorating the barn on a budget. And I said, well, I'm certainly on a strict budget because I have so many animals. Oh, yes. And I'd like to show you a little bit about this horseshoe wreath that I designed. Would you like designed. to trade places with me? And it's, then a can... little bit, it's a little bit unique. And it's Beautiful. not extremely fancy, but it's something that you can make with things you have at home already, most likely. It won't cost you a lot of money or take you a lot of time, but I would like to put two of these on my barn so I can have two horseshoes on And the you know, if I barn. had money, I would buy that. <laughs> oh, nice. I would because Thank it's you. so pretty. What I would do, and we were talking about this earlier, because you have that piece of wood just as a stand for the wreaths, right? Yes. I thought I, I thought that was that. a beautiful backing. And, and she loved the blue backing. I love the right. blue backing. So if, if I could, I would get two and like put one on each door. Oh, yeah. I just think they're gorgeous. So tell us and that's what just another the little one I made with coat hangers, it's too. It's so pretty. And I would like to show you a little bit how to make this because you might not be able to understand it if you don't see all the process. But what do you have here? You have ribbon that you found at home, that you had at home anyway? Yes, I already had that wire coated ribbon. The, the uh, garland? Wire, garland ribbon. Wire garland, and then you have this ribbon too. You have all these things at home. Yes. You have tons of twine. Lots right? of twine. <laughs> and these days you have a lot of green twine, I guess, right? Yeah. And then a coat hangers. So with those hangers, four so. items, you were able to make this beautiful wreath. Right. Okay, so are you going to show people, demonstrate a little bit? I'd like to show you my design and hopefully give you inspiration to create your own. Yeah, too. we do hope to inspire people to get out there. and. So I started this braid. This is going to use six strands of baling twine. And if Gabriella would like to hold, help hold, I already started this one. And we need to braid enough length that will fit the length of a coat hanger. So it's six strands, take two a piece. I wonder if we should put this up this way a little bit towards the camera so that they can. Okay. And I just keep I'll wrapping them you. over each other. Okay. And if your baling twine is long and you've just started, you need to keep pulling the threads out so that they don't tangle at the bottom. Then you're using double twine, not single twine. I thought the double twine was much more effective. It looked prettier. It does look prettier. The single just didn't show up very much. So your thumb stays on the center one and just keep pulling the other outside pieces across. And this is sort of like braiding your hair, right? Yes. Like braiding your horse's mane. And yes, braiding twine. some people do simple braids for their horses. And it is so pretty. And so we just needed to do enough of that that would cover the coat hanger. And this is how I tie it off. Just wrap one of the loops off and pull it over. Oh, that's a good trick. So there's your strands there. And I think, you know, this is just me because everybody's unique and we all do our different things, but I think this is really pretty, this ending. The end. <laughs> yeah, I do. Like a horse's mane. Like a horse's mane, a horse's tail, yep. And so I opened up the coat hanger and leave a little hook on each side because you're going to want to attach it to a nail or, or a hook that you are, have already. And I threaded this twine through the coat hanger. If you can see how I did that. So you just, just kind every of weaved inch, it. Just you weaved it and out. about every inch in and out. And that gives you your form. So it stays like a horseshoe. And you also use white, uh, a white hanger rather than a dark hanger. Probably a white hanger looks better. Either one, but we're going to cover it up with ribbon too because That's we right. want it a little bit fancier. That's right. So I will hold up some ribbons. Okay. And Gabriella All can right. hold this for okay. us for a second. And I have done a lot of crafts. My mother taught me to do crafts, but I'm certainly not a professional. But I just thought that red looked really nice on there. I also have some blue. That's and beautiful ribbon. Tie a tiny knot in the top. Oh, that's going to look gorgeous. Can I have that ribbon? Yes. 
and you might want to pre-measure so you don't have to <laughs> awkwardly do this and just keep wrapping it. But this also shows people how, you know, it's, it's not easy, but it is. You yes. can sit there and you can do it and, you know, in 10, 15 minutes you have a beautiful ornament. And just keep wrapping. That looks gorgeous. And the sparkles just make it really fancy. Very so beautiful. if you're planning to have a barn party <laughs> and you don't want to spend a lot of money, you can just put up a couple of these, and then there are a lot of things that you can do with the baling twine. And if you don't have green and you really want green, ask your friend. <laughs> yeah, and for those people that don't have baling twine and don't know what it is, baling twine is the, the material, rope. the it's rope. Hemp it's rope, rope hemp. that there comes you go. around the bales that we get to feed Hay our bales. horses. Yeah. Um, so I could add another color to this, or I could hang tiny ornaments off it. So, well, get a little ornament. Do you have something there that you can show people? I have these pretty oh, little balls, pretty. and I thought they looked a little like apples. They do. And I have the florist wire, although you could use string or fishing line, if you happen to have any of those. That's right. I never thought about fishing line. There's all kinds of things. And if right? you wanted to decorate it up more. You can get creative. There are a lot of different things you could do. You know, I just thought of something, too. If, you, if you're if you a horse person and you have extra um, um, line and fencing, right? It comes in different colors sometimes. You could probably yes. use that, too. Yeah. There's all kinds of things right. that you could use. So, look, you have a coat wire that's nothing. I mean, a, 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 um, a hanger that's nothing. You've got some twine now. And on top of it, you put this and this. And look. What a transformation. Yeah. So let's put it in front of the camera so everybody can see it. And there's your horseshoe. And for if luck. I took just a few more minutes, it would have come out more smooth. But And you can I do all kinds of things. You can just you sit and look ideas. at it and be inspired day to day and decide what you're going to do with it. And year after year, you can change it too, right? Yes, so one year could right. be one way, and another year could be another way. That's right. Because the twine holds up. Yeah. Right? So that is actually very beautiful. That was one idea. And we had some branches that we cut off of a Christmas tree, a regular fir tree. And because I'm a nature girl and I'm a farmer, I tied it off with some baling twine that I had braided. And we also could put some red balls on it. And uh, what else could we do, Gabriella? Oh, well, we, we have could a ton decorate of stuff. this little sprig. Well, let me just pull all this out because people have these things at home. If you don't want to use an entire piece of garland, garland comes in all kinds of varieties now. We have that beautiful garland that Brenda has for the table that's really thick. And then we have that really thin garland. We have all kinds of beautiful colors. And they're just so brilliant and very holiday-ish. And, you know, you could put them on and it just makes you feel good. So you could tie a little piece on the top if you just wanted a little bit of bling. A little bling, could that's die, a good tie horse Tie just bling. a little bit of top on the top. Um, but the other things we have, we've got, we all, we both brought, why don't you show the ribbons that you have? Because people can go, and it doesn't have to be someplace where it's really very costly, right? There's a lot of places that sell ribbon, and I'm going to yes. mention. Shop, shop the dollar type shop stores, the dollar the bargain Shop the dollar store places. has beautiful things. Martin's has beautiful things. I Green found and red is really nice. It's quite traditional for Christmas, but you can use whatever you like. Yes, because also this is a holiday show, so we're covering all the holidays, including Hanukkah. So that's the Festival of Lights. And, and blue and white is nice. Yes. And then I found this in a jar. These are things that probably people have at home and they don't even know what it is. These have been stuck in boxes for years, but I found it, it was in a jar. I pulled it out and it was just a little bit of garland that was mushed up. So you take this and maybe you sprinkle it. Oh yes. Right over your, I don't know if it's gonna stick, it's but it's almost glittery. like glitter, but it, it just gives it, isn't that gorgeous? <laughs> so you can do that. Get your kids. The kids are going to be off of school for vacation week. We've got about two weeks where the kids are going to be home. So if you're not skiing every day, <laughs> to get the kids and help them do this. Look at this beautiful ribbon. Oh, that's beautiful. That's really pretty. So sparkly. Yes, sparkly ribbon. And if Sparkles you don't happen to have the fur yet, if you haven't bought your Christmas tree or didn't need trimming, um, you can use cedar. If you have cedar branches in your home, you can decorate the cedar branches. And we also have like... I know this isn't your very traditional holidays because you got your first horse and he was real and I had a fake one, right? <laughs> so I'm a little more untraditional. But so I think that even these ribbons are pretty and I think if you just use, I love color, color. I guess. And I love red and green and blue, but I like these colors too. Yes. So 
basically what we're saying is you can take anything that you have, look outside and see what's growing out there and see what you have in boxes that you haven't seen in a long time. Right, like the cedar might not be traditional, but it's an evergreen. Right, and it, and it doesn't have to be traditional. Right. Unless you want to be, and that's okay too. We right. have some little pine cones. You could probably that's tie right. a little pine cone to the uh, to the clippings. She has right? some awesome pine cones. I have some big cones. ones. I have you to show should those. see those. Oh, I found this. I mean, this is more New Year's Eve-ish, but you know it's coming. <laughs> so anything sparkly anything. is good. <laughs> and anything that you enjoy, because I was talking to Brenda earlier before the show, and we were laughing a little bit, and I said, "Well, you know, this isn't a show about judgment." We can't judge each other. We can just enjoy it and right. have fun with it. And whatever makes you feel good. The holiday season can be tough sometimes. Uh, it's very emotional. And if you can find something to enjoy and bring the family together, that's a great thing. And if you have horses and have all this stuff around, by all means, get busy. Yes. Um, I got some winter berries. I stopped over at Sally McPhee's. <laughs> <laughs> I'll mention Sally's name. And she was kind enough to give me some winter berries. And these winter berries, I just grabbed them. I was in a hurry. It was cold and it was slippery, so I just pulled them off. Thank you, Very Sally. Very popular for decorating. And they're beautiful. Put greens with them. Yes. Let me ask you a question, though. I mean, we have to be careful as horse owners and animal owners what we have around our animals, too. Right? Yes, there are some so, things they shouldn't eat. And that was something very important that you mentioned about tinsel that hadn't yes, occurred to me. Do you have me. that box of tinsel? I do here? have the box of tinsel. No, I don't. The traditional tinsel that I always remember putting on my tree when I was a child. Well, we didn't have cats, so I didn't have to worry as much. But puppies and cats can get into a lot of trouble if they swallow a long t piece of tinsel. And why is that? It's very <coughs> they important. They wrap around their insides. They just can't digest it and pass it through. Their intestines. You know, and I suppose so. that might happen to a horse, too. Horse seem to, to be a little bit more discernible Some horses what they put like in their to mouth. Eat you never know, right? <laughs> right? So if you put winter berries outside and they decide they're going to nibble on something, we probably don't want them to nibble on that. We so you have careful. to be really careful. Um, so there's a couple of other things that I found, and I, I literally found these at home. I have no idea where I got them, but Everybody's seen this. Yeah, the, the stars. Um, there's, it, what is it? It's just wire, and they put stars, and you can get this for almost nothing. Yeah. But you can do so much with it. And then I found these, and I was actually going to try to put these on one of my horse's heads <laughs> for a <laughs> presentation. But you could just take a little piece of it, and you could just decorate. Angels. Yeah. You could decorate with it. You could put sparklies on it. Um, so that would be pretty with it. Oh, yeah. And weave it in and out, and it makes oh, it a little more fancy. Oh, that would be pretty. Then you have another, fancy. another wreath. Yeah. Yeah. Or just tie bows on, tiny bows. Tiny bows would work. With the fine ribbon. Um, oh, here's some gold. If you made a tiny bow. Oh, yeah, that would be pretty. With the fine gold. Well, I need a little longer strand, so it's trial and error. It is trial and trial error. Trial and error. But don't throw anything away because you might wish that you had kept it. I could make tiny bows with this wire garland or some fine uh, ribbon and tie them on there. So whatever color that you're, you like and whatever you see that inspires you. So you, you know. could weave it and leave it flat on the table for an ornament, or you could hang it up. Yeah, and a lot of the stuff, I, I imagine people look through it. I was going to go through my basement and just throw things out. And then I looked at it, especially when I decided to do this show, and I thought, wow, this is all so pretty, and why is it in boxes? So I'm just going to take it out. So um, I have a few other things that we can show. Um, this is just a potpourri of, of, of items that I found, really old items in boxes. But if you, can you pick up your, your uh, clippings and we can show people too that you can, what, put a little, stick, them down stick the little Christmas tree in there or not. Or um, these old lights that I think people must recognize them, but they're like really out outdated and antiquated. But when I was a little girl, this is what we used to have. And we don't use them anymore, but you could somehow tie them in there and the color looks pretty, don't you think? You could incorporate it, yeah. sure. It might have to be a bigger piece of, um, of clipping, but I think you're getting the idea. I have a little horn here, a little elf. Um, I found this, and it's a wreath of its own, yeah? So we could put that in there somewhere. We could put it, like, maybe, would it work the at top? the bottom like this or at the top? Mm -hmm. At the top or in the center? I usually hang mine upside down, but you can hang them that oh, way, that's too. that's right. That's <laughs> Because they hang is, easier this way. Yeah. Either way. <laughs> and this way you can just play with it. 
and nothing's the wrong way, yeah. right? That's Anything right. we do is the right way for the she holidays. She just wanted to set that on there. Okay, that's okay. That works too. <laughs> And it adds more color. The color, the silver, the green, and all of that looks really pretty. Um, I found, well, these really old ornaments. And I'm going to show all the ornaments, the hanging ornaments that I tried to make out of twine. And I'll pick this up. Um, but one of the problems that I ran into is that I didn't have a mold. And um, if you have a mold, then you can do a lot more things. But I didn't want to go and buy styrofoam molds just for this show. So I found this. Uh, hanging ornament it has a mold and it's very very old so you replace the string um, and there you have another ornament that you can put and again you might have to get more clippings okay um, that just gave me the idea. another idea another inspiration okay because we can use that to hang ornaments old ornaments so, can be hung on the braided twine and oh, put in the barn isn't this a great idea <laughs> so let's see if this old ornament is going to withstand a new because piece of we're twine. still on a budget, so we'll <laughs> use our old ornaments and our baling twine. And we'll be on a budget for how long? Forever. Uh, forever. forever. <laughs> Gee, I thought but that we're was happy a trick about question. That. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, it is a trick question. It's a question you wake up every morning and you say, oh, geez, this is going to be forever. And then you go see your horses and you're so happy that you had them. Oh, and you look at their wonderful. faces and they're so happy they're with you. Oh, and here's one. These are nifty because it just has, I don't know what you call these little uh, wiry things. So you can just hang that. All ready to can go. Can you do that? All ready hang to go. Anywhere? It's um, a tiny little one. Well, I think people get the idea. Yes, we can I make our own garland. The There's that. And a pretty bell. Isn't that pretty? Sure, that works. And uh, we have different colors of twine, too, for people who didn't know. Green is very popular, but there's also brown. It's kind of blah, brown, but you could do yeah. things with it. And those are the ones that are made out of hemp. But we have plastic twine, too. And one of the problems that I have, and I know a lot of uh, people struggle with what to do with all that twine, because you can't mm -hmm. uh, recycle it, really. The hemp will eventually... Um, break, break down, down right. but it'll take a long, long time, but the plastic stuff never does. So right. do something with the plastic stuff. Um, okay, so let me show you what I did. There is a picture that shows, right after all the doggy pictures, all the animal pictures, there's a picture of my centerpiece that I made. And sometimes you make these things um, and you don't do it with the intention of making anything. All of a sudden it just comes to fruition. So. Um, there it is. And this had a rough trip up here this, this morning. This had a rough <laughs> trip, but it's okay now. Right after this picture is the picture of the, um, the centerpiece. <laughs> there it is. So I just took a picture of that. My husband had a wonderful Thanksgiving dinner, and you can see the very edge of the centerpiece there. So you have this, and basically what this is, um, it, this is potpourri, so it smells really good, and um, it's special to me, too, because my mother makes potpourri, and so this is what my mother made for me. I put it on the table. I, I found a little, just a little plastic um, tray, and then I found some flowers that were drying, and I, I meant to dry the flowers out, and instead they stayed there. But then I got ribbons, and right now there's a whole lot of stuff here, but you get the idea. You can take these beautiful ribbons and just let them hang. Then I found all my little horsey ornaments from when I was just a child. Some of these horses have <laughs> broken legs. They've been very injured over the years, but you can't see them. In the, uh, in the centerpiece. So you have all these little horse heads and horse bodies in the potpourri, and you can add right. a candle. I mean, you'd have to be careful putting candles here. Brenda suggested the tea lights, which I forgot. There are little tea lights that are battery operated. And They're the tiny. tea lights would be and great work and that. very safe. Um, and then you can get a little piece of garland if you want to give it a little bit of, of color. Maine it has oceans and we have shells, so I have a little shell. And then a friend of mine bought this for me. I can't remember what they're called. What are these called? You the shake globe. them? Yeah. Isn't that pretty? And so this is what I added I to it so. this year. And so it looks really, it's really a great busy. great project for the kids because there are endless possibilities. Yeah, and everybody can, can contribute. Their little horses. Right? 
Yeah. Uh, and beauty's in the eye of the beholder, right? So I think right. it's pretty and it has a lot of meaning to me. It might not be something that you want to do, but there's a whole lot of stuff you can. Anything with horses is okay with me. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I went on a mission trying to figure out what to do with twine. And for people that don't know, I'm going to get off camera for a second. And I'm going to show people what horse people have at home. We have many of these bags, 50 pound grain bags. Do you put your twine in grain bags? Yes. Okay, so a lot of us do that. This is Without full even thinking about it. of twine. So um, it can get frustrating because we want to know what to do with it. So if you don't have horses and you want to try to do some of these things, there's plenty of people that have them and they very willingly probably give you the Most twine. Most likely right? they will give you the twine. So um, what I did is I had, I decided to just sit down and see what I could do with this twine. Um, it wasn't as exciting as I thought it would be, but I learned a lot. And one of the things that Brenda was talking about in doubling the, um, the braid using two, two strands right. is very important because when they're single strands, they don't really work out. Um, so here I have blue twine. And this can be a little hanging ornament. You can put a little bit, a little, little ho uh, hook on it and hang it on the on on our little hanging on our strand <laughs> on yes. our strand right <laughs> so this is in blue and i think actually the blue is a pretty color isn't it yeah and if you don't like the blue well you can spray paint it now this orange twine i'm not really crazy about but it's you know it's in the red family so if you're traditional it's kind Something of red. for the children to <laughs> so do there's keep another them one busy. it will keep them busy keep their ha little hands very busy so this is you know again this is a single strand um, so it's very thin, but it's something that the kids could make and then just hang it. Um, this, I don't know what it is. It looks like a little star, but whatever it is, it's a little <laughs> flower. Um, and then we have, of course, our traditional green twine. And the cats would love to play with that. You know what? You're right. The cats would Especially love it. Especially the barn cats. Oh, wow. That's yes. something I hadn't thought of. So this is, I'm going to give it to my mother's cat. Mm. All right. And so here's more. I mean, I was just playing with it, trying to figure out what to do with it. But I actually. Gathering ideas. Gathering ideas. And is. here's a little curly one. See, that, yeah. that kind of stuck. <laughs> and then I had a lot of. Um, Burlap? What do you call it? Burlap, because we used to wrap the trees in burlap, and after a few years of doing that, we stopped <laughs> and let the poor trees go, but I have tons of burlap. But what I wanted to show, this doesn't look like much, but it's just a bunch of burlap made into a ball. You take a spray, a spray can of whatever color that you want and spray paint it, and you got another decoration. Mm -hmm. And it's really easy for a child to do. Yes. It doesn't take that much dexterity to roll it up, and it makes them think, and it keeps them busy. It's good for outside. It's good for out. That's right. <laughs> it's good for outside. There's another little ball, and then a, a bigger ball. Yeah. So there's just all kinds of things that you can make. Um, so that's our twine. So please, if you don't have horses, find somebody that does and say, please, I'll take your twine, and you have something to do over the holidays. Right. I have one. Oh, I, I always braid the twine while I'm waiting for the farrier to show up. Oh, well, there you go. And it's good for emergency fencing, too. Oh, and you know what else is good for? If your fence is emergency down, grab halters. the twine. And halters. Emergency oh, halters. I made a halter for Lexi once that's with a, the that's twine. That's right. <laughs> and I say all ACOs should have twine in their cars, right? Yes. Because if you ever need to go help a horse, that's, that's strong right. stuff. Okay. Strong. So this isn't the best example, but again, you can keep your kids busy. I took this, which was burlap, and then I just took some spray paint and I painted this red, this blue, and this green. You know, it gets, it makes a great holiday decoration um, and you could just enjoy doing these things and it's a lot of fun. Um, okay, I have some pine cones that are not native to this area, but the pine cones that we have here in Maine are very pretty. And the pine cones. They're beautiful. I just love these. Cute. They look like a Christmas tree now. <laughs> they do. They look like a his Christmas tree. I kept them in the ribbon that they were in, but and I don't remember. I think maybe as a child we maybe put glitter on them, but they're connected with a... Can you help me pick these up? Because uh, at some point, Aha. I think they maybe were meant to hang like this, yeah, kind of upside down. Right. But maybe they, sh they could be hung the other way. So there you have another ornament. 
but look, you take a pine cone that's just brown, and it's pretty anyway. You put a little glitter, and look what you get. Yeah. And then they have this stuff that I hadn't seen before called glue. There it is. This is what's in my cones. backyard. Is the smaller ones from what they call the scrub pines, I think. I have those, I'm too. I'm not a tree expert, but no. that's okay. But I did find out, too, and people might want to know, at first picking up all those pine cones, because it was like a stellar year for pine cones this year. Uh -huh. But the, um, the pine sap, it was really sticky, but it takes about a week and then the sap is gone, oh. right? So then you can handle them without worrying about it. Good. So here's one, and this is a main pine cone, and we just put a little bit of that glitter glue. That glitter glue is great. Yeah. It's really easy. You don't get your fingers dirty. Not you as can, much. Not <laughs> as much. And you take something that looked like this, and you turn it into something like this, and then you can put it on your decoration. Um, the other thing that actually Brenda had reminded me of, and I totally forgot, are the things that we have. If your horse wears shoes, you have horseshoes, and for those people that don't have horseshoes, they're great luck. You have to keep them up like this. Yeah. Um, so I, again, do different colors. So I did blue on the outside, and I just spray painted it red on the inside. And you can put a little ribbon. You can decorate those two or the tiny, can, the tiny little balls. Yep. You can hang little balls right here. You can get some twine maybe and wrap it around and then have another hanging ornament here. Uh, my craft the uh, drawers seem to be getting a little low, uh, <laughs> but if we wanted to glue a reindeer on there, I thought that would that be would cute. That would be cute. Very cute. And then if your holes are open, then uh, string the wire through and hang it up. Yep. And for those of you that aren't familiar with horseshoes, be careful because some of them have the nails in them, and you can, uh, you know, get a little, get injured. So be careful in handling them. Uh, but they're wonderful. Um, and these actually have studs. Studs are what horses sometimes get put on their, their shoes in the wintertime the winter. to give them a little bit of grip. For days like today. For days like today. <laughs> um, and so, okay, so I have one traditional um, wreath that I wanted to show. And this is something that my mother made. Um, it's not uh, real. It's, what do you call it, plastic? Yes, I guess, I okay. So. But she's really creative. She strung some lights through it, and we're not going to be able to turn them on, but they're different colors. And she got this beautiful material that's almost velvety. And she, she strung it through, and, you know, for very little, you can get a traditional wreath. And then I had a young lady named Carrie Ann who comes to work with our horses make a poster for us. And she and her mother did this, actually. So, you know, mother and daughter enjoyed an afternoon of putting pictures together, and these are our guys, of course. Uh, but they did a beautiful job. And this is something else that you can do. It doesn't cost much. You got a little poster board. You get the pictures off the internet. Collage. Yeah, you have a nice little collage. And then she also made this, it's so pretty, a mobile. And they didn't buy anything. They had the ribbon, right, yes. and the string, and, and the then these little balls. ornaments. Aren't they pretty? They're, they, they look Bells. a little bit like the ones you had. Tiny balls. And we have the little horse here. So there's a little mobile. I'm not sure where I'm going to put it. I, I don't want to put it in the barn because of the dust, oh. right? But well, it might maybe survive it for a month. <laughs> well, maybe I'll put it in there. Um, and do we have something else that we wanted to show? Gee, Did we I, go through everything? I've, I've got most of my uh, materials out here now. Okay, well, this is cute. I found this somewhere. I forgot that I had it. I've so. never seen one of those, a Wrangler. <laughs> it's <stocking>. a Wrangler. <laughs> so uh, if you don't Wait have horse horses. catalogs, <laughs> I wouldn't get one because then you're going to be broke like we are, right? <laughs> but they have a lot of great stuff in the horse catalogs. Um, and I wanted to show people because I thought it was really interesting. Again, this is something my mother did. But this is just a plastic sprig. Plastic sprig, thank you. And then the ribbon. But my mother is so dedicated that she actually <laughs> puts tissue to in preserve them. To preserve and we pull them. it out at Christmas. I know. And we put it back but in. But then we have to put it back in. Time. I think we have to hire people to do these things. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think that was it for there, but we have. Is that it for the, the decorations? And yes. we have one last thing? Okay, so this is... I hope we've inspired you. Oh, I did want to show this. I didn't have a mold right for the, um, for the twine balls, the, de the hanging decorations, but so I made a little twine ball 
here, and then I covered it with ribbon, and I'm not the artsiest person, but I just went around and around. It ended up looking like a little swan. It does. So you can just put it out somewhere, add it to your hanging decoration, or you can just put it in your centerpiece. And the last thing that we have is we wanted to come up with something that everybody could eat over the holidays. So if you have a horse and you have dogs, most people we were talking this morning, do you know anybody that has horses that doesn't have dogs? I don't think I, I don't either. Do. Oh, <laughs> so we Unless thought, they're renting an apartment and can't. Well, but, right. Uh, but usually seems, they go together, right? It seems that people who love horses love almost all animals. animals. And so we, I just took the horses and the dogs and learned to actually try them out on the, uh, on the goats. goats. But she gave me a wonderful recipe that will be on the website. Um, oh, but before we do that, can we just go back to the pictures? I wanted to go through the pictures one more time because after that centerpiece, we have lights on the windows. Well, I'll, let's see. We'll go back, go forward a little bit. Okay, we'll talk about that picture. That's the tree that's outside. Okay, well, let's see. <laughs> That's my sign, my Blix Horses sign. I have a little garden on the outside of my house in the corner. And actually, I didn't think much of it, but when Brenda saw it, she said, oh, that's pretty. And so I said, wow, yeah, I guess it is pretty. So those were just clippings, and we spray painted them green and blue. And then I put a little red garland. And voila, there's the decoration. That's twigs, all it is. but they looked really nice painted. And they've lasted since 2008. That's been wow. up there, 2009. That's a long time. Then... Next to that, there was a Christmas tree. Well, it's not a Christmas tree, it became one. But I just took garland one day and I just went out and almost threw it and went back and forth. You can make your own design. And I was telling Brenda, you have to do it every couple of years and then the garland gets, gets very weather beaten. weather beaten. But in the wintertime when the wind's blowing, it frays the garland and it just gets blown away with the wind and it looks really, really beautiful. Uh, we have a couple, there's another picture. Um, I did that. I found my flying horse. I, I bought it years and years ago and I forgot that I had it. So finally I had a place I could put it. So I put it on the wall with nothing. And then I started thinking about it and I thought I love white lights. So I strung white lights around it. And that actually is, a, is, a, um, is for St. Patrick's Day, the decoration, because I put different decorations up there. Valentine's Day, I put a heart, I put wreaths. Um, but at night, it looks really pretty. So the next picture, I believe, has, well, that's my little horse head again that I used to have. But there's another picture of the flying horse. <laughs> We're going through all the pictures. There we go. Not yet. Not yet. Almost there. It's towards the end. Are we taking the coat oh, off? Oh, well, anyway, well, there's, there's a picture. <laughs> There's the picture. I, is, I think that's the picture, the night picture, but it looks beautiful. Yeah, and you can string as many lights as you want. Lights are beautiful. They make you feel warm, very holidayish. Even if it's not the holiday season, it makes you feel good. And it's nice to have your house illuminated a little bit. That's a little bit bright, but you can modify it. You can just have one string of lights if you want. <laughs> so, and also there were a couple pictures, but I'll just talk about it. We, we strung some lights on one of the windows, and I have those lights on all the time. Um, and the beauty of those lights is that you can turn them on or turn them off or put them in cluster. There's the picture right there. It's not a great picture. It looks prettier during the day. But the idea is that you have a little bit of light and night lights for your dogs or your animals that are inside or for you so you don't, you know, bump your knee against the coffee table when you're wandering around. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> <laughs> well, so we came up with this. These are my ideas, but this is Brenda's recipe. And... Uh, this is the recipe here. We're going to post it on Facebook. It's very, very simple, and it is, um, we're going to have to read it. We have uncooked oats. We have flour, shredded carrots, wheat germ, which is really great for you. And like you said, and I looked it up, but vitamin E, folic acid, okay. all those things. Very healthy. Um, but we use uh, wheat, not wheat germ, but wheat bran. But wheat germ is better and has many more vitamins and minerals because it's yes. the center of the, of the of what is it, of the grain, right? So it's wonderful for you, salt and molasses. And um, we made these, what do we call them, farm balls? <laughs> 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 so we have twine balls and farm balls. <laughs> and um, we just put them in a platter here. And in the center, 
Would you like to take one and try it? Um, maybe later. Like, maybe, maybe later. Maybe later. Well, I think I like they to try one. They smell really good. Mmm. Well, my animals approved, mm. and I have fussy poodles. Yummy. So you, you would feed them sparingly, especially little, to the little dogs. Very important. Sparingly. This little ball, I would probably cut it in half for my horses, get half and half. You just horses have to be can careful. eat a They're lot bigger, more than dogs, obviously. But if you want to be conservative, you know, you want to be careful. But with the dogs, like she said, just a little bit. Yeah. But you can share them, which is a whole lot of fun. Here, we have animal crackers, right? <laughs> These are pretty safe. You don't want to give them a lot. Again, remember the horse, the dogs can be very sensitive, but you can give a couple to your a horses. A treat, not a meal. A little treat. And then we have just some little salted crackers, and we have Chex Mix. Oh, Chex we Mix love is good, Chex right? Mix. A little salt. And we have your traditional mints and candy canes and those, all those things that you can share and enjoy over the holidays. Just remember not to overdo it because we all have to be careful with that, don't we? Okay, so the recipe is quite easy, okay? Even if you don't cook a lot, I think you can still make it. Mm -hmm. We just get all the ingredients oh, ready. And let me do that. Let me put these up here. And mix so everybody them can see. One at a time in a bowl. We have wheat germ. We have oats. I didn't bring carrots because everybody knows what carrots are, <laughs> but you have to shred them. Molasses. Shredded they carrots. They have a lot of calories, molasses. Um, Yes, but it's not a lot. I had two different kinds of molasses, so I used that one, and I didn't put salt or anything else, but those are your basic ingredients. Molasses are good for us, too. Molasses are why? Yes. Well, you can read the label if you have glasses <laughs> on, but it has a little bit of iron, which is very important. That's true. But it does have and some we, nutrients. We usually just use these during the holidays the anyway. Horses molasses, love them. right? Horses and love molasses. It's good to give them, you know, if, you have, if they need some medication. You, yes. Sometimes, at least you'll get away with it once. Usually. The first time after the first time, it's over. But it works pretty well the first time. So, so mix them all in a bowl and take a tablespoon, pack it in, and make these balls. Or you could make long, like make them like logs too, but make the balls, oh, yeah. put them on a cookie sheet. It does not have to be greased. And then put them in the oven for about 15 minutes. And the only thing that I, I was a little bit disconcerted with as I was really messy by the time I got done with the molasses. I had molasses all over my hands. <laughs> <laughs> and they were very sticky, sort of like the, the pine sap. You can grease your hands before <laughs> if you want to. But uh, they're kind of pretty with the orange tint. They are. The animals like them. And, okay, so we could substitute for the carrots. You could put apples, but then you'd have yes. to do it quickly because, or eat them quickly because they wouldn't last as long, right? Right, you would have to keep them in the refrigerator. But these can keep out of the refrigerator. And you could wheat germ, um, you know, there's other things that you could probably throw in there. If you bake anyway, you can probably think of other things that would be fun. I thought about putting a little pumpkin spice in there, but uh -huh. I didn't. Uh -huh. But it, that's your recipe, and I think you did a great job. Um, I used to be with a Kenny Bunk Dog Advisory Committee, and we used to have the uh, breakfast for the pooches. And everybody had to come up with dog cookies. Uh -huh. um, and I have a bunch of, of, of uh, recipes for dog cookies that I was going to bring. But you can find something, you know, just make sure that you're careful and you're conservative when it comes to the animals. So mm -hmm. I think that does it for our show, does it not? Yeah. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Brenda, thank you so much for coming and being thank a you. part of this. Thank you for inspiring me and for um, thinking that some of my things were, were, were kind of pretty, and I appreciate that. That was and, nice. And uh, we're going to have you back again maybe at some point down the road to talk <laughs> about standard breads maybe. We'll see right? if we'll I have see. a minute. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. So um, I'm Gabriela Rodriguez. Thank you so much for joining us. Join us again. We have a couple of shows coming up, one on uh, shoes for horses and what you need to be aware of and be careful with this time of the year with the ice. And so um, until then, remember to care for your horse, enjoy your horse, and keep your horse. See you next time. And happy holidays. Happy holidays. <laughs>